Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, Dragon Ball Super. Oh, there's so many Dragon Balls. A million video games. So many years of manga issues. It's a sprawling, gigantic franchise. Uh, it was just trending a couple days ago because they announced a new, a, a new, well, not a new character, but a character was just added to the, the lineup of the current video game. It's an absolutely, like I said, it's an epic property, famous all around the world. If you're completely unfamiliar with it, um, you can go online and check it out. Ruiner, thank you so much for that resubscription. And hello to everyone else who's joining us. Yeah, so we're going to look at some collectibles of the best character in the Dragon Ball Saga, Vegeta. Okay, that's arguable, but uh, I am one of those fans who, who appreciates the Prince of the Saiyans. Um, in, in, in very brief terms, uh, <laughs> in the Dragon Ball world, there are aliens called Saiyans. Uh, they, their planet was destroyed sort of like, yeah, exactly, Zarda. Uh, their planet was destroyed and it's, it was sort of like a, a little bit like a Superman situation. Oh, Arsenal Roy, interesting. Okay. That Goku is a bad father. Uh, he is. There, there are a lot of father issues in Dragon Ball, like a ton of daddy issues. That is definitely a thing that's a, a theme. Uh, so anyway, originally, Goku Goku is a Saiyan, and he comes to Earth, and it's sort of like a Superman Krypton thing. But then as the series goes on, there were like a million Saiyans who survived the destruction of their planets. Of their planet, rather. Goku, the main character of the Dragon Ball saga comes to Earth and becomes a, well, it, okay. The different series have somewhat different uh, themes and genres to them. So the original Dragon Ball, not, no, no extra letters or words after it, Dragon Ball was the story of Goku growing up as a kid. And it's, and it's sort of, it's very fantastical. Uh, there are lots of talking animal, an anthropomorphic talking animals and weird creatures, and it's kind of silly. And he grows up, and he's a he's a very powerful warrior. He has a tail, so Saiyans are born with tails. You can see Vegeta's here is wrapped around his waist like a belt. Uh, but under the right full moon circumstances, uh, a Saiyan, a natural born Saiyan, with his tail or her tail, will turn into a giant, rampaging ape. <laughs> and it's really, really bad. Like, super powerful, giant, rampaging, crazy ape. Uh, but they figure out if you remove the tail, it prevents that transformation from happening. Uh, it, it's a whole thing. So anyway, when he gets to Dragon Ball Z, and Ruiner, yes, uh, dra much of Dragon Ball is based on Journey to the West, yeah. Uh, or or in, inspired by, I guess they would say. So when we get to Dragon Ball Z, uh, it becomes a little bit more of a less of. It sort of ages with the with the reader at the time. So while Dragon Ball was more, a little bit more kid friendly, uh, then Dragon Ball Z becomes more like teen uh, action, and then you get a lot of fighting, and then of course in Dragon Ball Z is where you get all of the memes and the jokes about how. Uh, the shows are only actually five minutes long because there's a 10 minute uh, last time on Dragon Ball Z and then a next time on Dragon Ball Z at the end. <clears throat> and it's just fighting, fighting, fighting. And yeah, there's a lot that's just fighting, fighting, fighting. Uh, the animation is really good for the most part. Lots of interesting characters. But we find out that, oh yes, there are other Saiyans and the, the most noteworthy of them is Vegeta. So he was the prince of the Saiyans and he grew up with everything, right? And he was always told, you know, you, you're going to be the greatest, the best of us. You're going to lead. Uh, and then he eventually makes his way to Earth and finds Goku. Goku, who always is the first to increase his power level. Uh, and then Vegeta is always playing catch up. And yeah, that's one of the reasons why people like the character. Because he's sort of the perpetual underdog 
Um, he is very, he's very self-centered, uh, but he does come to value other people and his family and all sorts of stuff. Like, like Zarda said, he actually, he's a character who does go through some interesting story arcs and development. Uh, some of the other characters in Dragon Ball you could kind of say have been around for decades and don't really go through all that much development. Or they go through, but then they just sort of reset. So today I am going to, I'm going to open up a couple of Vegeta things that I've had for a while in my toy closet. And then I'm going to show you almost all of my Vegeta collectibles, all the ones I could find and take out uh, late, late, late last night. So first off, yeah, Goku is, I mean, he's pretty much the same character the entire time. Um, Goku, okay, so as Saiyans, Saiyans have access to essentially unlimited energy, and it's described differently in the different series, but it's Ki, K-I, energy, typically, um, and as they access it and become more powerful, they go through transformations, which is great for selling toys and making video games. Uh, typically the transformations involve becoming more muscular to a certain extent, but the big thing is, is all about the hair, right? Saiyan's hair change color, change shape, gets longer uh, <laughs> as they power up. So first off, we're looking at the, <coughs> the Bandai 66 figures, and that is because they have 66 points of articulation if you count all the little bits I think this guy that they come with uh, I don't love these but they're okay they're sort of a chibi weird proportion style they got big old heads I do like their articulation though and they're they're definitely fun to play with you can do like any possible pose you can imagine lots of ball joints lots of double joints Super, super posable. And Aridinsk, there's certainly, <clears throat> Vegeta certainly has that, <coughs> oh, excuse me. I had to eat very quickly right before the stream started. Yeah, the Boo Saga, for sure. Okay, snap on that head. Obviously, where are his hands? Well, he comes with several sets of hands. <coughs> so yeah, typically the the power up evolutions are via intense energy focus, anger, and a lot of screaming. Sort of the other meme about Dragon Ball is that it's just characters screaming for long periods of time, and that's true. Uh, <laughs> at least for the first couple of series, to power up, you needed to get a lot of uh, a lot of yelling out. That would slightly change in some parts of the series, but but that's <laughs> it's a meme for a reason. Okay, so these little tiny hands plug. Not super well, unfortunately. I should if I heat this up, it'll be easier. Uh, Aerodinsk, you know, I don't know. I <clears throat> I've watched most of Dragon Ball Super, and I haven't watched anything else lately. Yeah, I don't know. Going back, how how rewatchable they are for, or how watchable they are if you were never a fan, or if you just never got into it. <laughs> uh, yes, and there are androids, and there is uh, there are relationships with androids. Depends on depending on sort of what format you watch the show, and from what era it's more or less adult. Uh, there are edits made to the American broadcasts here and there. It's minor stuff, and then. Yeah. 
Uh, the abridged series, sure. I cannot get these little hands in. That's unfortunate. Um, I don't have my hobby knives with me at this point. Ah, oh, that's okay. All right. So anyway, uh, super articulated little dude. The nice thing about these is that it has a little flying base. I'll worry about the hands later. Not important right now. So you can put him on the base, and then he can do all of his cool, crazy moves up in the air. Hiya! Yes. Oh, Arsenal Roy. Lots and lots of training. The all the best training scenes happen in the Cell Saga. Because there's this alien comes to Earth and is going to destroy everything, but agrees to basically have a tournament to see who is the most powerful. Uh, and then during that tournament, the the good guys have access to a sort of an extra dimensional training facility that's that's outside of space and time. So an what is it? I think it's an hour in there is a year an hour of our time is a year in there so they take turns yes the, the hyper hyperbaric time chamber so they take turns going in there and training and evolving into new forms and uh it's, it's all very very exciting all right so we have so oh so this i should say is a super saiyan vegeta so the first <laughs> okay uh <laughs> hey Bjork the Orc. Uh there are many different like I said, there are many different forms of Saiyans as they power up and and go through all these transformations. Uh there are endless arguments about exactly how many forms there are, how many half forms, half step forms, uh pseudo forms, all this other stuff, but we're not gonna get into all of that. You'll see a lot of the forms with as I bring out my Vegeta toys in just a minute. Oh, thank you so much. Because I've got my water right here. Well, Zardas, even that is complicated because Trunks, Vegeta's son. Oh, I'll talk about I'll talk about all the names in just a second. Uh, yes, Trunks achieves a, a form that is ostensibly more powerful, but has its downsides. Because the different forms have different... Well, yes, typically the power levels of each form increases, but there's some of the forms have lower stamina, some have lower speed. It's not a one-for-one a -one as they increase. Now, this line, these were the Shoto figures. I love this line. They are, you know, relatively correctly proportioned, small-scale figures, Lots of articulation, but they look a lot better than these. These specifically are from Dragon Ball Super. So Dragon Ball Super is the latest animation and manga series. Uh, they introduce a whole bunch of new forms in this series, of course, because they always do. And at this point, when you get into Dragon Ball Super, it really is... Okay, let me, hold on. One, let me step back for one second. There's a lot of humor in Dragon Ball. For as much as it's about fighting and you know defending the Earth and people dying and coming back to life and all of this sort of thing and universes being destroyed, uh, there's a lot of humor, a lot of silliness. Goku, the main character, is essentially just a perpetual kid who is grown up. He's he, he's definitely got Peter Pan syndrome especially having to do with being a parent. Uh, but by the time we get into Super, there, there are aspects of the, the show and the manga that are literally just self-parody. And that comes in the form of the some of the latest evolutions because the Saiyans figure out they, they can evolve into these god forms. So you literally get things like so this form with the blue hair is Super So it's Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Vegeta. And then there's 
all of these things with blue at the end of it and it's just it's just ridiculous but it's like clearly meant to be ridiculous but we get new cool forms and cool colors Uh, many, but not all, of the toys you'll see today are from Bandai, uh, often imported via Bluefin, which you can see this one is here, uh, but not all. Yes, S, yeah, SGS, uh, or, yeah, SSGSS Blue, and then, yeah, oh, they're all of the, the abbreviations for the different forms. It, it gets really, really silly. And at some points, the animation actually diverges from the manga. Uh, not in this one, Aerodance, no, but some of, some of the toys that I'll look at today actually did come with, with little candies. All right. So again, yeah, these are just... These are pretty cool. I like these little toys. Oh, oh, Eric, um, in so in Japan, a lot of these these little box toys uh, do come with candy or gum. So the fact that they and sometimes for the American release that it's taken out because that would have to go through a whole different set of safety regulations. And basically just cost the companies more money. And also the imp importing them would cost more because it has to go through multiple categories. It's just, it's all, it's all money. It's all money issues. So yeah, these are the little Shoto figures. I have, I have a few of them. They made a whole bunch of these guys. But yeah, I, I like them. And even on these little guys, they have, they have good head sculpts. The paint isn't fantastic, but it definitely works. And it's basically just, there is white painted on his eyes and the blue, which is a nice little, it's got some nice sheen to it. And yeah, very, very articulated. Uh, lots of ball, ball joints that pop off if you push them in the wrong direction, which is a good thing. So they don't break. And then, yeah, typically a bunch of extra hands, but the fists work well enough on this, this little one. Okay, let's let's do it. So my, so like I said, I like Vegeta. A lot of people do. Like I said, perpetual underdog. Kind of a jerk, but that's okay. I'm trying to think of like, okay, what's the best way to go through all of my all of my Vegeta toys? Do I do it by age of the toy? Do I do it by evolution of the character? Hmm. Okay, let's do it this way. First, we're going to look at some... No. Okay. We'll do it this way. All right, so standard Vegeta. Now, you'll see a lot... Most of these figures have this sort of... And for some reason, my, my screen is showing up a little bit more purple than in real life. So this is blue. Uh, looks a little bit purple on my screen, at least. I don't know. Anyway, so this is the standard Vegeta outfit. Uh, it's He's essentially wearing traditional Saiyan armor that he brings with him to Earth. There are lots and lots of variations, though, in this as the show goes on. Uh, if you look at the little one, it started with more pads on the shoulders and then around the waist obviously he ditches those uh but it gets a different basically it, a different back well that whole collar piece goes away so you'll see like i said most but not all of these i know aerodins i'm not even going to mess with it though this time so standard now this toy is when I always forget the company that picked this up because Bandai made the, the original toys in Japan and they're of various quality. So like I said, there have been a few different companies who have made these. 
Um, Erdinsk, I do not. So, standard Vegeta. And this is what his hair looks like, typically, as a normal Saiyan. And see, he is he is angry. Almost always angry. Um, then we have a Vegeta who is battle damaged. He's taken some hits. Same basic armor, although they've toned down the colors quite a bit. Um, this was in the same line, but this was much later and had a lot better articulation <laughs> and a better uh, some better details to it. So yeah, these were great. Uh, jumping around a little bit in the in the history of the of the series, but we've got Vegeta in some street clothes, looking pretty tough. But again, same, just regular black hair and that very distinctive, pointy, uh, pointy format. So those are my like my sort of standard size action figures of regular Saiyan Vegeta. I don't have any of the really old Vegeta figures. Um, I just, I didn't love them. I, going, going all the way back, I only have a handful of the original Dragon Ball Z action figures. You'll, you'll see a couple of them in just a minute. Now, of course, like we talked about, we've got power-ups into Super Saiyan form. So going into Super Saiyan Vegeta's... Zim, where's the most famous one? This one's pretty good. So when you become Super Saiyan, the hair turns yellow, the eyes turn blue, and there's kind of a... There's been a lot of scholarship on this. Why, at least in the in those beginning series, when you become super powerful, you turn into an Aryan-looking person. Uh, it's it's just a weird. It's just a. It's just a thing. It's it was. It's artistic. It was you know. I don't know. And not all the forms are like that, but that is what uh, what the the traditional forms are. So yeah, so the hair turns yellow. It spikes up a little bit more than normal, depending on the character. Uh, Vegeta already has spiky hair, so it just kind of spikes up a little bit more. And yeah, just more muscular, but we have the same outfit, just in a different color. Because why not? Let, let's make all the toys in slightly different colors, so when you put them on display, none of them quite match. What are you going to do? It's fine. All right, so we've got a Super Saiyan Vegeta. We've got another Super Saiyan Vegeta. I like the figure on this. <laughs> yeah, the, the kids in the back doing their best, too. Uh, I don't know why they, they give this guy such a weird face. It's so wide and just kind of gross. Now, if you look closely, you'll notice that some of these will have interesting... Yeah, I, the face isn't great. Interesting little unique things. First of all... You'll see that the costume on this one is slightly different. He's lost the actual torso armor and then much of the shirt somehow. Basically turned it into a tank top. And very subtly, this, is, this figure came in, a, I think, in a two-pack because if you look really, really closely, he is wearing a single earring. Now, one of the aspects... The profile is a lot better than the, ugh, the front. So one of the cool things about the Dragon Ball Saga is another... Obviously, there are ways to power up individually, but to become to multiply your power-ups, you can fuse. Two characters can fuse together to become a new amalgam. And uh, yeah, if you, if you know, you know. Uh, it can fuse together to become more powerful. Now, there are various ways that you can do that uh well typically two ways first of well i mean 
one of the ways are the Potara earrings. And these are earrings that are basically the they're basically the possessions of gods. But if they give them to mortals, if two people put on, basically you get a pair of earrings, one person puts on the left, one person puts on the right, it immediately fuses those characters together into, like I said, an, an amalgamation of the two characters with more power than they would have singly. If that makes sense, more than more than the sum of their parts, you might say. Uh, so yes, this, like I said, this was a a very specific figure representing that with the earring. Now, technically, a Potara earring fusion is uh, is permanent, although of course they get around that in multiple multiple times in in the show because they want their characters back. The other form of fusion, which is arguably more famous, is the fusion dance. And so there are even little minifigures that uh, celebrate that. So yes, they, they are plugged in together. So they're, you can separate them, but they come as a pair, as a set, and they are joined at the fist. Uh, yeah, so the, the fusion dance, you, you can YouTube it, they're all, they're a bunch of silly videos, but essentially you, the two characters have to perform a synchronized dance move, and then they end up sort of touching their fingers together, and hilariously, you'll have to trust me on this, if one of the, one of the two is slightly off in the movements, the fusion is flawed in all sorts of comic ways uh sometimes the fusion character is super thin and emaciated sometimes huge and fat uh just all sorts of goofy things that they do with the animation and the the fusion created from the dance uh those are temporary fusions so they'll just they just stop after a certain amount of time uh also do you want the gigantic ball of balls Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, also, the when characters fuse, depending on which form of fusion they use, uh, they get iconic um, outfits. <laughs> Which again, all of this sounds so silly, but and it's pretty much just a way to make endless, endless amounts of toys and video game characters. Uh, this is another Super Saiyan Vegeta that was... Again, obviously you can tell by the body this was more like super uh, super poseable type of action figure. Just endless amounts of joints. Super full. Like okay, got it. Uh, weird arm things. I don't I don't love those arm joints. I mean you can use them to good use if you sort of like have it off to the side, but if you can see those armpits that just looks it just looks weird. As we've talked about, when you when you get into figures that are super articulated, there's all sorts of um, all sorts of ways to try to incorporate more articulation, and sometimes it does end up hurting the overall aesthetics of the figure. It's a trade off. Now, technically, some of these are okay. You ready for this? Some of these are Super Saiyan one. And some of these are Super Saiyan 2, because again, there are endless levels and uh, variations among these transformations. So Super Saiyan, essentially, like I said, is yellow hair. Uh, the hair starts lifting up. It's a little bit more spiky than your normal hair with blue eyes. Super Saiyan 2 is very similar. Uh, usually in the animation, there's a little bit more definition to the hair, but it's still... It's still yellow. The eyes are still blue. Uh, and, <clears throat> but um, typically in the animation, the aura around the character, the color will change a little bit, and there'll be a little bit more sparks in the aura. Again, it's, it's, all, it's all very subtle. This is a great figure. Some of these, they did the hairs in like more of like metallic colors. Which really is not the way it looks in the show, but it looks cool on a figure. I like this one. Uh, they did the thing. It's the his 
the blue on his uniform is is like a matte. It's, it's a it's a nice finish. I like this this figure. Now, as I said, welcome Builder S. You're not supposed to flash Super Saiyan two. Yes. Uh, characters in Dragon Ball, they come, they go, they die, they come back to life. Now, what, why, why is it called Dragon Ball? I'm glad you asked. Uh, this is from Neon Genesis, so ignore the outside. But inside, let's see if I can do this without. So in the universe, there are Dragon Balls. And a lot of these action figures came with Dragon Balls. So I just have a massive amount of Dragon Balls. Uh, these are magical artifacts that if you collect the whole set, and I don't remember how many Dragon Ball, is it seven? I don't know. Anyway, if you collect them all and bring them all into one location, they summon a dragon. And the dragon, like a genie, grants wishes. So typically, these are used to bring people back from the dead. Uh, yes. <laughs> I know, right? Don't, don't eat them. Oh, shoot. Uh, the kids love to play with these. So yeah, so each one. And oh, man, if you really want it, it was a pain. If you needed, like, oh, I need the three ball. There's a two... Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna close this up. But essentially, yes, those are the Dragon Balls. Uh, okay, actually, let me rephrase. So these are the original Dragon Balls, and then later there are other versions of Dragon Balls and Space Dragon Balls and Shadow Dragon Balls and you, you, yeah. Uh, yes. So some of the names get changed depending on the location. Yeah, this thing is really cool. I only have a handful of um, Neon Genesis items. Stay. Names. Names in the Dragon Ball series are very interesting. Uh, the the creator, Toriyama, he... That's one of the other ways that he, he was a little bit goofy. Namekian Dragon Balls, sure. <laughs> uh... Almost all of the names in the Dragon Ball Saga are jokes. They're references to things. So you see we have a character here named Vegeta. You might say, hmm, sounds a little bit like vegetable. Well, it's supposed to. Uh, almost all, but just about all of the Saiyan characters are named after vegetables. Now you might say, wait a minute. I thought the main character of this series is Goku. Well, it is, but that's like Clark Kent. That's his. That's his Earth name. His actual name, if you're unfamiliar with it, is Kakarot. Yep, that's his birth name. Uh, Rabbit Wombat. Good luck, buddy. Hopefully, hopefully things go okay. We'll see you later. So yeah, they have very silly names, and then and it. Vegeta's family on Earth, his son, his wife, his other kids, uh, they're all named after uh, undergarments. <laughs> his wife is Bulma, which is a play on bloomers. His son is Trunks. Yeah, so that's that's a thing as well. I, I Yeah, what, what are you going to do? Now, of course, like I said, we get characters back from the dead, and sometimes they even have sort of Christian-themed halos. Now, there are <laughs> there are entities that live in the underworld. There's sort of like a devil sometimes that puts souls to work. So they, they play around with some Christian themes, but obviously it's not uh, it's not full full Christian stuff. So this one obviously just sort of 
cheaply plugs into his hair there. But uh, yeah, so you do have figures who have come back from the dead and have halos. Sometimes they even have angel wings. I've got a Goku figure with, with angel wings. All right. Oh, this is as good a time as any to talk about gimmick figures. Because you can't just have action figures. You can't just sell one version of a character. you got to sell as many as you can. So we have lots and lots over the years of gimmick figures. Let's see if it still works. It does! And it makes noise. Let's see if we can... I'll put it right up to the microphone. I don't know if you can hear that. There's only one noise they use for all of the toys, so you'll hear it again in just a minute. But this is a pretty neat one. Uh, obviously, the this arm isn't going to be... isn't going to have a ton of movement because obviously there are wires going through the toy to get to the battery pack and the activation button on the back. But, I mean... It's a, it's a pretty pretty decent way of incorporating light and sound. Uh, and they have all sorts of energy powers, and it takes the form of discs and spheres and lines and all sorts of weird things that they shoot and manipulate. So uh, something like this is, is pretty cool. I was always impressed with these. Now, another way they did action features in this line is they had a bunch of toys that came with these goofy bases. Now you'll notice several things going on here. Uh, there's a speaker inside, there's an activation button, and there are magnets. Now on its own, it does the power up energy noise. But if you have the right figure, and they, like I said, they did a whole bunch of these. I've got a million of them around. So what do you think is going to happen when I put this Vegeta on that base? Uh, yeah, the not the best sculpt. And again, they had to thicken out the neck to get to get the uh, the lights through it, and it it's definitely to the detriment of the figure. This is one of the earlier ones. Let's see if this still works. Oh, there we go. So there's the light in his chest and in his head. <clears throat> Powering up with energy. Now, thankfully, they redid some of these. So this one is a lot better looking. Obviously, based on... That, that head, generally... Um, they tried to reuse sculpts where they could. So yeah, this one... See if this one works. Kinda. Well, anyway, you get the idea. Uh, unfortunately, the plastic used for these translucent parts is really tacky, and I hate it. I hate it so much. I can't stand touching it. So, yeah, super gross. Yeah, it's pretty much just on the the hair. Ugh. Yeah, like it, it's super sticky. I don't like it. I don't like it. Okay, so that is all of my traditional, typical Vegeta and Super Saiyan Vegeta. But, oh my goodness, hold on, because there's so much more. Vegeta goes through, goes, he goes through phases. And they're not always good. Sometimes jealousy gets the better of him and he just he just can't take it and he makes deals with devils so then we get the famous Majin Vegeta there's a character Majin Buu uh, it's very complicated I'm not going to go through the whole thing but um, there's like a space witch and uh, characters that get transformed and absorbed and it's 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 a it's a long storyline so there's there's a lot to it but uh 
yes. So Vegeta ends up taking taking power from one of these characters, gets the M on his forehead, and then usually like a little bit of red in the eyes. You can see a little bit there. And turns bad, fights a bunch of his friends, uh, kills some people in during uh, kills some innocent bystanders during a fight. Uh, eventually, at the end of this saga, he will sacrifice himself and redeem himself and die, and then of course is brought back to life later. Uh, all sort of essentially. Uh, this was cool. Company made this action figure. And then made a bunch of different versions of it. So we got a Super Saiyan version. Same sculpt, but with the yellow hair and the blue eyes. And then they thought, you know, man, we got such a good we got such a good figure here. What else can we do with it? Well, let's re-release it with metallic colors. And if you look, there's actually metallic on the the gloves and boots, as well as the hair. So it's got, again, that sort of gold hair thing, which eh, it looks good on an action figure. It's not accurate to the to the show at all. And yeah, they, they gave him more of a, a serious... If you, again, if you Google search Majin Vegeta, you'll see like he's, he has some very, very famous, very particular uh, facial expressions when he's this version of the character. So yeah, this was cool. Um, I made sure to get. I, I want to say that the the metallic one, it was limited somehow. It was somehow harder to find. I I don't re actually remember, but I made sure to get that one. And then, in, and this is a very popular version of the character. So there are a ton of Majin Vegeta toys out there. I have another one in a super, super articulated form, still in his armor. Uh, this one they went really heavy with the the bulging veins in the forehead. Which is another aspect of, of that version of the character. Uh, yeah. Okay, so those are all of the basic versions. Um, these are also, again, like sort of standard action figures. There are a million small-scale things that have come out for Dragon Ball over the years. Uh, some of them are action figures that are just slightly smaller scale. <laughs> I don't remember. There was some gimmick to this line. I can't remember what it, what it was, though. I think, was there like a transforming station or something? I don't know. Uh, it, it doesn't look very good, but it was cheap. It's kind of got a goofy... The eyes are very close together. I don't know why. Other than it's just a, a bad paint application. It's thirsty work talking about a bunch of toys. Oh, here's another... Again, it's a little tiny figure, but it does have a lot of articulation to it. I want to say... Was this one of the first of the... No, that's not the same scale. I don't know. I can't even remember where all these things came from. And the, some of these toys are, you know, 20 years old. But again, just a, just a bunch of miniature figures. Uh, most of these are authentic. Some of them are not. Uh, these are cool. I don't remember what the name, but with these bases, these figures are... are very detailed, really good representations of the characters, for the most part. If I yell at them, will they transform? Sometimes. Uh, some more goofy, goofier looking ones. I, I don't know if that's supposed to be like a kid version, but it's just a... That head is just a blob. He does have pupils painted on, so there's, there's something, but... There's another Majin Vegeta. So yeah, a ton of just little... Little miniature figures sort of everywhere. Goofier ones like they're attached to Dragon Balls. And it's weighted so they'll sort of roll around. Now this I'm pretty sure is a bootleg. 
It looks awful. Somewhere in this house, and I can't find it, I've got a, a whole baggie of figures that look like this. Uh, I can't find it, though. But, like I said, all, almost all my Vegetas were on display, so I did get this guy. And then, in Japan, there's a line of, of uh, figures called Kubricks. And they look like this. Now, this is a bootleg Kubrick. And you'll see that the colors have <laughs> sadly changed over the years. Uh, it used to all be this color blue, but most of it has turned to green because it's a bootleg and the, the quality of the material and the paint is crap. But for some reason, this one has stayed blue. Uh, it, but like I said, yeah, these are bootlegs. There used to be, I don't know how much there is anymore, but Kubricks were at least at one point really, really popular. And it was also just as popular to make uh, knockoffs of them. So there never were actual Dragon Ball Kubricks. So somebody just made these. I, I got these on eBay a million years ago. I've got a whole set of them. Not knockoffs, although they kind of look like they might be, are these. So these are I-Men, the letter I-Men, and this was a, a line of figures made by Toinami. Toinami had the Dragon Ball license for a little while, and so these are similar kind of things. They've, they're have they like Mini-Mates a little bit, um, with a couple of noticeable differences. They're thinner, so they actually have somewhat better proportions than Mini-Mates. They have magnets in their feet which is really handy for attaching them to bases or if you want to stick them on your refrigerator or whatever. And they did a whole line of Dragon Ball Z figures. They were in two packs. But the really cool thing about this line is that they had the Super Saiyan characters had translucent hair and a gimmick where they would light up if you, oh, that's right. So there's a, I'm trying to remember how this worked exactly. There's a little tiny battery that you could slide down in his back. And then, how did it actually light up? That's what I can't remember. It's like a little um, a little disc battery inside. You have to slide it from the... Is it just from... If you just attach it to something metal? I actually don't remember. Oh, shoot. Oh, yeah, it must be, because you can see the big, old, the big old metal joints to... to act as uh, conductors. Um, I don't think it's going to stretch far enough to get those also I don't know if the battery still works or if light still works but anyway it was a neat gimmick little mini figures that actually had lights inside without making them too bulky and too weird looking to get it to work so yeah little, little itty bitty guys now let's talk about more esoteric transformations because these are great We've got standard, standard Vegeta. We've got a million versions of Super Saiyan Vegeta. But that's not all. Because, oh no. These characters go far beyond just, just mere Super Saiyan business. Now, you've seen one already with the blue. I really, really like the blue. Um, I'm trying to find a good... A good Vegeta blue figure that I really like. In the, the, the very end of... Dragon Ball Super, oh man, it gets so it gets so ridiculous. <laughs> so Goku and Vegeta go through all of these god transformations. Uh, they get red hair, they get blue hair, and then and then they actually diverge. And this happens occasionally in the series. Usually, what happens in all of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, blah 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 blah, is like I said, Goku will unlock a transformation. And then Vegeta will have to catch up to achieve it. Sometimes he'll have to cheat 
to achieve it, depending on what it is. And I'll talk about that more in just a second. Uh, but in Super, they actually they actually diverge. Goku goes through uh, these instinct transformations that do one thing. Uh, Vegeta unlocks a further evolution of the uh, drag the the blue form. I know this all sounds completely ridiculous. Uh, and it actually, the animation for Dragon Ball Super also diverges a little bit from the manga. So in the last few episodes, Vegeta gets... Wow, that just popped right off. Uh, a, a different shade of blue in his hair. And I actually think it looks really cool. So I'm, I'm trying to find a good a good action figure of a larger size that will, that will represent that in my collection. Haven't found it yet. Or haven't picked one. Oh, uh, I forgot about this minifigure. So this is a later thing by Bandai. I forget what they call these, but they have this style for a bunch of different properties. This is a little bit of a, a chibi figure. It's attached to the base, uh, but it's got a little display, which is kind of cool. And there are, yeah, like I said, there are a whole bunch of these. They don't attach to other ones, but you can sort of line them up next to each other and they look nice. So there's that. Okay, so now in... Oh, and then, all right. Now, other than all of the TV shows, there are a million movies that tie into the shows. So they're just little side stories that they're like, hey, we'll make this into, you know, an hour and 20 minute long, and then we can show them in a theater, and blah, 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 blah. So they've done a lot of toys based on those movies, and sometimes they've done things a little bit differently. So while most of the... Most of these traditional action figures are about, eh, they're about four inch scale, give or take. For some of the movies, they did larger scale figures. So we've got this really nice battle damaged Super Saiyan Vegeta. And again, on a larger scale, they've got so much more room to do detail work. It's, it's really, really well done. Even like this transition is all sculpted they didn't just paint that, so you can, I don't know how well you can see, but it's, you know, you can see, like, where all the, the clothing has been torn and pushed down. There's wounds and scratches, and all the paint is done really well. So, yeah, these this line was, was really cool. This is the only figure I have from this movie line. Uh, they came in, like, these cool canister packaging. Um, from what I've seen, I think these, to try to buy any of these now, they're pretty expensive. They've been out of print for a long time. But, uh, but yeah, th these were these were really cool. And again, some unique versions of some of the characters from the movies. Okay. Dragon Ball GT. So Dragon Ball Z ends. They go through the Cell Saga. Uh, it's a thousand episodes to get through this tournament to see who's the strongest, who can finally beat Cell. Uh, it turns out to be, of all things, it's Goku's kid. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. <laughs> he unlocks... More, more power, the usual thing. And then we get to Dragon Ball GT. So in Dragon Ball GT, uh, Toriyama wanted to sort of get back to the roots of Dragon Ball, make it a little bit more kid-friendly. And so for the, the first part of that series, is Goku gets shrunk down to be a kid again and goes on these space adventures, going to various planets, and, um, and it's sort of more silly and fun. This, as the story goes, people weren't really into it. They're like, no, no, but we want Dragon Ball Z action. So then the last part of uh, GT just turns into endless fighting. <laughs> but they unlock new forms. And they unlock my favorite form from all of Dragon Ball. Although, like I said, the, the last Vegeta form in the blue is pretty cool. But they unlock... Super, okay, so we talked about Super Saiyan. We talked about Super Saiyan 2. Super Saiyan 3, uh, the the hair gets very long. It turns into a whole long tail that almost reaches your feet uh, and big and puffy. The eyes stay blue. Well, they, they start to turn a little bit greenish, but whatever. Uh, the eyebrows disappear for some reason. It's goofy. Vegeta doesn't typically have a Super Saiyan 3 version uh, only because... Like, the hair would be weird. I mean, there are, like, drawn versions of it. But, like I said, we get, we get Super Saiyan 
four in Dragon Ball GT. At the time, it was the most powerful form. They've done other different forms later. And for this form, they actually go in a very different direction. So this is the original old Japanese toy. Now, this is one. These these toys are a little goofy. I don't have a lot of them, like I said. Um, I do have a couple, but this will give you an idea of what it looks like. Now, what do you notice? Well, there's a there's a lot that's going on here. Very different outfit than we've seen for Vegeta or most of the characters. Uh, the tail is back. So to become a Super Saiyan 4, you need a tail. Well, you might be asking, well, Goku and Vegeta had their tails removed. How do they do this? Uh, it's a long story. <laughs> I'm just going to put it that way. The hair is dark. It's not light. And you see this red part. This is fur. Yes. They become furry in more ways than one. And it's got this very unique distinct hairstyle so like i said this action figure dates back to 19 can't even read that what does it say 96 i'm just gonna focus on the foot there does it say 96 yeah so these are the original bandai figures from japan um you still track down some of these I got I picked up a few of them on eBay. They're not great. They typically have three points of articulation. So the arms move, the head moves a little bit, not even very far, and technically the tail moves, but it's kind of junky. But like I said, I really like this form, so I've collected as many as I can find. Now This was when what, man, what company was making these at the time? Why does it... Jax. Okay, that's what I thought. So Jax Pacific, it's an American toy company. They got the license for a while. Um, several of the smaller toys I showed were from them. And they made toys in the slightly larger scale. Uh, this one is in grayscale. They did it in... GT is canon, yeah. Well, I mean, as as far as I, as far as I know... Um, So they did this one in full color, and then they did it in a grayscale. I don't have the full color version. Jax did a absolute terrible job of distributing these action figures. And when I say terrible, not only were they just impossible to find, but you can tell because if you look on the secondary market, there are toys from this line that sell for hundreds of dollars because they were just never available in stores. You could just never find these things. So the few that actually did make it out there into the real world, uh, people could resell them for massive amounts of money. That's why I don't have a full color version of this toy uh, because I could never find one and I wasn't willing to pay hundreds of dollars for it on eBay. It uh, looks like my internet connection did the typical thing where it drops to crap. Um, but it doesn't look too bad right now. But anyway, you get the, the idea of what it looks like. Thankfully, more recently, Bandai has been doing really good action figures. And this is, this is the best Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta action figure we'll ever get. So it's fine. Uh, I mean, look at that. Look at, look at how spiky that hair is. It looks so good. It's got the red rimmed eyes. Very unique. So again, this is fur. It is quite articulated. Um, I just wanted it in a cool pose. So I'm just going to leave it like this. But yeah, this, this one is super rad. This one only came out, I think, last year. Early last year. Maybe late the year before. But it's great. And it's not even that hard to find. Uh, so, so good. But like I said, I love this this design so I got a couple of the statues this is an itty, itty bitty one obviously they really emphasize the tail <laughs> on this statue 
Now, this is a form that, like I said, it, t it takes a few special things to get to this form. You have to have a tail. Uh, it can only be done in certain... Essentially, you have, to, you have to have the ability to evolve into the giant ape form, but then condense that energy back down into a small humanoid form. Uh, Goku, of course, is able just to do it for the most part, but Vegeta, uh, Vegeta can't. He cannot naturally achieve this form. He has to cheat and use Blutz Rays. <sighs> I, don't get me started, but, um, but he does achieve this form. Uh, this is the most recent statue I got. Just, just awesome. Love it. Uh, there are more. There are more versions of this character out there in statue form uh, that I might pick up one of these days. But I really, I really like this one. I had this one on pre-order before it came out. So, from a Big Bad Toy Store, I believe. But yeah, I just, I, it's, it's so. At least, at the, especially at the time, this form was so different than anything they had really done with these characters, other than just the ape versions themselves. But um, yeah, I just I, and I like the colors. You get the the cool pinks and purples. Uh, Goku, like I said, obviously does this form as well. And then there are a bunch of just like chibi versions. Uh, this one has the black and white because he's. This is Vegeta, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta from a parallel universe or Xenoverse. It's it's a whole thing. Uh, they did super, super, super chibi. They're just all heads in a little tiny body. Kind of weird looking. Uh, I've got a keychain. I don't know if this is real or if it's a bootleg. Not sure, but it's cool. And I just, of course, I had to get everything. Uh, this is 100% a bootleg Lego of this character. There are no Lego Dragon Ball Z anything. So if you see Dragon Ball Z characters in Lego form, they are bootlegs. Some of them aren't too bad. This one is, eh, it's passable, I suppose. I have multiple forms of this character in this little focus. No, you're not gonna focus this time. There we go. Uh, these do have their corresponding Goku versions for the fusion dance because they do fuse in Super Saiyan 4 form. So yeah, so that is all of my Super Saiyan 4 Vegetas. I like it. Uh, one thing I did not do, so these are all of my just my pure Vegeta collectibles. I do have even more toys of his fusion forms with Goku. So Vegito and Gogeta are the names of those two. Uh, I could bring those out on another day. I just <laughs> I figured I have enough Vegetas to last the whole stream. I don't need to take those out as well. Uh, the only other thing I'll talk about very briefly, again, because of Vegeta's character and how uh, ambitious and aggressive he is, he, let's say, frequently falls to the dark side and is, is either tempted or taken over by uh, alien entities. So in also in Dragon Ball GT, uh, there's this alien entity called baby i know it sounds really intimidating baby but um baby takes over vegeta and becomes this thing so this is another one of these old bandai action figures very little articulation uh definitely a, a cooler style though it, it looks pretty decent and then oh actually hold on here's the previous version. So this is when Baby infects Vegeta, starts transforming him, and he's got this, you can see his uh, sort of standard outfit, but then it's torn away, and he gets these baby forms. I know it sounds ridiculous, but... Uh, so then this turns to this, and then more recently, Jax did a pretty cool 
full on uh, full on transformation version with just an epic sneer yeah cool eyes these are flexible so you can play with them so yeah those are if not all of my Vegeta toys, the vast majority of them. There might be a couple hanging out. Like I said, I, I know somewhere I have a, a baggie of little tiny figures, but I, I couldn't tell you where they are. Uh, after after Vegeta, I think the, the most toys I have are of Trunks. Excuse me, I should say Future Trunks. Yes, there are two different versions of the same character. One who came back from the future. <laughs> Dragon Ball's complicated, folks. Uh, I've got a fair number of Goku toys. I don't really like Goku as a character, but, you know, he's he's the star of the show, and he gets a bunch of cool forms, so I got toys of that. And like I said, I do have Vegito and Gogeta toys, and a couple of the other characters. Uh, some, some Gohans. I'm trying to look over from <laughs> where I can see on the shelf over there. But, um, but yeah. Hopefully you've enjoyed this this very specific walk down memory lane. Do any of you have any uh, Dragon Ball collectibles? If so, you can let us know or drop a picture and show and tell in the Home Buddies Discord. That'd be cool. There are a bunch of... Dragon Ball Saga mini statues. Sort of like a cross between... Sort of like a cross between the, these two. And there are... For whatever reason, like, there there were real ones. So uh, Dragon Ball statues are typically made by Bandai or Banpresto in Japan. But then there are just... There are a billion knockoffs and bootlegs of those uh and they'll do them like in crazy colors and you'll get like between the the designs of the stat of the statues and the colors you'll get forms that were never actually in the show uh which can be cool they're like alternate you know alternate universe what if versions of some of those things so those are out there so be careful if you're looking for authentic uh dragon ball stuff because there are there are a fair amount of bootlegs out there uh cool so that's gonna do it for me today and toy tuesday i'm gonna check and see if anybody else is online at the moment today is not only tuesday it's also dunes day so come and hang out today with jessica and i over on her channel jessica nerdy 5 p.m pacific we might read dune you never know. We're getting close to the end of the book, so uh, it's exciting. Children of Dune. We are, we're already past the beef swelling. So great. So great that that came up during Jessica's turn. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you missed it, uh, you, you missed a lot. There's beef swelling in that book. Ooh, not a lot of people online right now. Interesting. That makes it go. So you've got a few DBZ keychains, yeah, yeah. Again, just and even what I've shown is just such a small, a small sampling of what's out there. Uh, it's as far as action figures, mini figures. Uh, now there are. <laughs> um, what company is doing the toys now? Is it Bandai? I think it's just Band, the American branch of Bandai. But they're they're essentially Rubik's cube figures. Yeah, they're they're weird, but hey, uh, lots of there are lots of model kits of all these characters, just tons and tons and tons of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it just so happened. Yeah, that Chicky left while we were, while we read that part, and then he came back. That was that was great. Uh, all right, um, no no raid today. No raid. Go go enjoy your lives. Go find somebody to follow or check out. Uh, yeah, so. Dune later today, Jessica Nerdy, 5 p.m. Pacific, and have a good one, everybody. See you 
if I don't see you for that stream, I'll be back here tomorrow for more uh, Slanesh Demon building on Warhammer Wednesday. Okay, bye.